Uh, you don't have to. Um, if you can cut your, um, your samples uh, consistently to whatever thickness, then, then you can present whatever you want. The standard method that was in now the seal and grains um, calls for two slices of bread stacked. Um, but most people don't need to comply exactly to the standard method. Um, the, um, you know, you can even argue why is there a standard method for testing bread yeah. when there, when the firmness value that would generate from the standard method is not how people buy and sell breads. Yeah. The, the, the thing is that it's, it's, it helps to get consistency and going to 40% of the depth. So if, if that, if that depth is a, is a different number, like when, when I've done tests on, on breads, um, where I had non-standard shaped loaves that, or, and I didn't have a, a bread slicer, I would simply cut the loaves at exactly one inch thick slices, um, which gives you more or less the same type of situation. That's right. Um, so when you have, um, you're traveling, uh, you're not traveling super fast when you test breads, but there is still inertia. And mm -hmm. so if you went to the 25% strain or the 6.2 millimeters and stopped, uh, mm -hmm. There are a series, a, a type of texture analyzers that have this buildup of inertia that that um, uh, that will give you a spike in force where you stop. Mm -hmm. And so by going to 40 percent and measuring at 6.2 or 25 percent, basically, you, you're going past that point and you're you're avoiding the inertia. Um, yep. But there's no magic to two slices. You could you do mm -hmm. a large thick or whatever. Yeah, or and as I was mentioning earlier, if if you're if you have small loaves and you use three slices, then you'd have to have multiple loaves to get more samples. That's right, but it, it is certainly there's no magic to two yeah. slices. It happens and to be the standard method. Yeah. It, I, I, I saw one question, Joanna. I'll just uh, mention is is uh, someone asked about TPA? TPA stands for Texture Profile Analysis. That's what we were doing earlier. Yep. Sorry, Ben. So, yep. Uh, just going to say on the thickness of the bread, when you have something that's really thin versus something that's more of a normal thickness, um, you know, the, the two slices just builds up that really thin slice a little bit. So you're not getting the bottoming effects like Mark was talking about, just mm -hmm. to be clear there that the, having the double stack just gives you more sample to squish and 40% of 20 millimeters it, it versus, you know, 28 millimeters is a lot better than 40% of Yep. you know, eight millimeters and 16 mm -hmm. millimeters, you know, that, yep. that's a, it's a closer spread than, than when you get thinner and thinner. So, mm -hmm. so if anybody wants, so, um, uh, I worked with Malcolm Bourne on texture profile analysis a great deal. Um, we went back and forth, back and forth on lots of different things over many years. Um, he liked texture profile analysis for many products, but the industry liked it more than he did. Um, <laughs> If, if you if you gave Malcolm a piece of a piece of anything, he would take a puncture probe and just poke it, poke it, poke it. He mm -hmm. would learn so much by just poking a product. Mm -hmm. uh, but so as we kept answering the same questions on texture profile analysis, um, I started making all these notes and I ended up writing a big long diatribe. And I apologize to Lynn because Lynn likes things nice and concise. Uh, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Carson, I mean, just. Ama amazing. No. <laughs> um, and so we, 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 we wrote this big, long diatribe on mm -hmm. the history and the background of texture profile, profile analysis and what's good, what's the good parts about it, and the bad parts about it. And I'm I ran it past Malcolm. I probably went five or six different drafts past Malcolm to make sure that it properly respected the history, what it does, what it tells you. Um, and then he also reviewed it from Alina's perspective. So it's on our website, just texturetechnologies.com, support texture profile analysis. You can learn a lot about TPA there. It yes, tells you Joanna what to has, do and what not to do. Joanna has already put the link in the chat for everyone. So uh, <laughs> Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, eight to 10 tests out of that one slice of bread. And so there you can see if all of a sudden um, the, the test is going awry in terms of the information it's giving you, then either there's something wrong with the setup of, of the instrument or interfering, or there's something terribly wrong with the bread, right? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, but that, that gives you, and you know, if, if, you, if you're creating your own test from scratch, I would say, then you can see it in the repeatability. If you know that your, your loaf is pretty consistent throughout, uh, minus the end pieces, perhaps, then um, it would be, would it be fair to say, Mark, that you, you should see fairly consistent, like we saw in the, in the original samples you had there, that tells us that the, it's a good test. Um, yeah. So, yes. So you, so you start by how well does the sample you're presenting to test mm -hmm. represent the batch or the population of the product? You wouldn't test a single cornflake and expect that cornflake to represent the whole box of cornflakes or the whole batch that went into hundreds of boxes or thousands of boxes. Uh, likewise, um, a single loaf does not represent a batch that's made. So, so the having a tight standard deviation, doing a large enough end, you know, three, six, eight, whatever you can fit, you might have to, if you, so there is a challenge to find out what the right N is how many replicates you can do. Uh, with breads, the standard deviations tend to be low enough so you can get away with you know, six replicates or eight replicates or even three replicates in a more consistent batch. However, the next level of test is whether or not it's differentiating. So just having a low standard deviation is not enough. You want to then say, can at that test, it also pick up differences in Staling differences in what do you want to know? So if you have formula A versus formula B, and they both give you a hundred grams plus or minus five grams, nice tight standard deviation, but there's no there's no difference that you think should exist, then maybe the test is flawed. Maybe the mm -hmm. test you need to go in a little bit deeper so that you're testing the product in a certain way. So a good test has a low standard deviation and also a good ability to discriminate between things that you think should be different. Um, yeah. If you have those two things, you have both the discrimination or uh, um, and uh, stand nice tight stand deviation. That's really the beginning of a really good test. Mm -hmm. And and if I may, I think just bigger picture for those some of the questions I've seen coming through. Um, texture analysis is often what I refer to as a relative measurement. Think about a this versus that question. You're rarely just testing you know, six slices of bread from one loaf and you're done. You need something to compare that to. Sometimes you're comparing it to earlier versions of itself, you know, before an ingredient change, before uh, some sort of, you know, supplier change, whatever that may be. And you're comparing historical data to new data. Sometimes right. you're comparing one brand to another, but the, the specifics of the test that you're running um, don't matter as much as you might think they do, as long as those specifics are the same for all the samples everything yeah you mm -hmm. can then compare all those results and you're really only caring of comparing one set of results to the other using the exact same method so you don't have to worry too much about you know is it a good test or not as long as you're getting the the kind of check boxes that mark talked about differentiating the known differences exactly. and yep. still telling differences in the smaller yep. nuanced in, differences in in, in product development or quality control it's basically going to be based on a standard that you are targeting that you're going right. towards right but you have to create that standard in your r d yeah. before you can get to the point where you're just you know you know higher than this and lower than that yeah so yeah. one of the, one of the things i would say for all the bakers out there in both large institutional settings and even a lot of the smaller bakers that might be watching is it's really important that you trust your own judgment yeah. if you think you have a good piece of bread then don't worry that it might be softer or harder than someone else's. If you think it's good and your customers like it and buy it, that's, that's your gold standard. And then, you know, to the extent customers set up, create some expectations, you know, oh, they like that bread, they like that bread, they like that bread. You then suddenly want to, re dem you want to create and present to them the exact same bread every different time, every time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so you're going to establish your own gold standard and your own performance and the metrics that you care about. Um, and then 
you might have variations. You might have, you know, this, this one makes good toast, you know, which is very different than something else, but that's a different and brand. And you can measure or, that too. You can, you can yeah, measure yeah, the, yeah. So, the crunch but the, of but the, the point toast. Is, things, yeah. Don't expect, don't look to standards as to what a good bread is. Trust your own judgment, trust your customers, trust your, your manufacturing group, and then know why you're trying to do the same thing again and again. Um, yeah. And if, you, if, if there's a metric that you think is relevant, um, uh, come up with a number. You can, you can quantify it either on a sensory score. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no reason to do it, use a texture analyzer all the time. Right? Yeah. You can just come up with your own sensory score as to how to quantify some behavior. You know, the, the buttering of bread might be relevant, that it doesn't tear mm-hmm. apart. So if that's relevant to you, figure out a way to quantify it, either on a sensory side, and that's, that's, that's worthwhile. Oh, but Ben just showed the crispiness and crunchiness of toast. Yes. See, there's, there's all kinds of methods available online on the texture technology site. You can, you can read to your heart's content. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ben. <laughs>
Um, so it's, it's just, you know, as you look at the, you know, you could have lots of little spikes on a curve and you have lots of little peaks and then you have an absolute peak force. Uh, so in most cases in the baking industry, when people talk of firmness, they really mean the absolute peak force that was encountered during the course of the test. Um, the real distinction there are, are there are two other forms of firmness. Um, one is toughness. So think of the total amount of work that your teeth encounter as you chew a product. So that's the, that's the area under the curve. It's the total, the toughness is the total work. And then there's stiffness, which is the initial slope, how fast forces climb as your teeth are closing on it. Um, and the sharper that climbs, the more your brain says, careful, 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 the force is climbing too high. Um, so, so stiffness happens to be something that consumers are really good at measuring. And it's really just the change in slope, the initial modulus of the material. So firmness is easy. It's peak force, absolute peak force on a test. Um, some people mean firmness and firmness could be the opposite of softness. Hardness and softness are sometimes on the same scale. On some sensory panelists, they actually have a separate, separate scale for tenderness and softness than they do for hardness. Uh, mm -hmm. Just trying to ask the same questions from some slightly different mental perspectives. Mathematically, from, from an instrument perspective, tenderness, firmness, hardness are all the same. Um, toughness is an area of work. Stiffness is a slope. Wow, the, this has been... Oh, sorry, Ben, go ahead. Oh, no, no, never mind. I was just going to finish the thought there, but it's, it's not, worth, not worth getting into. <laughs> this is yeah there's so many more thoughts we could yes. keep going and going i mean um for sure mark and i have often had long conversations over you know just one method or one idea um and and i i very much enjoy that and that's what i i love about you guys and and uh anytime i've had an opportunity to uh, visit the texture technologies booth at a trade show I've always spent a lot of time there because I really do enjoy the, you guys are all very passionate about the industry and about your instrument. And there's so much we can learn from the things you have learned and continue to learn as you have, as you have demonstrated with this too. And so we, we really appreciate your uh, time to do the seminar. And uh, I know I've, I've got some more pointers out of this and learned a lot. And um, I hope everyone else who tuned in has, and uh, so the recording will be available soon and we have lots of questions left. So I, I, I might talk to Lynn about getting on and doing another little a Thursday thought session or something to to cover some more of the questions because Happy to do uh, that. let me let me do a shout out to Lynn and the team at Bakerpedia. Um, it has become a really amazing industry resource. It is just wonderful to be affiliated with you guys. Um, they have really pulled together. Uh, you know, it, it's it's so deep, and you have so many different resources available for small bakers, large bakers, people coming into the industry, people that have been in the industry for many years. Um, it's really cool to see, uh, you know, what you've built over the course of uh, a bunch of years now. Yeah. So it's 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 exciting to see and be part yes, of. Yes, it's it's been quality phenomenal. resources yeah. are impressive. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it really has. I mean, uh, we uh, we we really enjoy working with Lynn, all of us, and uh, she she has a vision and she doesn't let go of that, and she reminds <laughs> us every day. <laughs> um, and it's it's been phenomenal. It really has. Mm -hmm.